Welcome back. I'm speaking with Dr. Meg Jordan, the global medicine hunter about indigenous medicines. She searches the globe for healing remedies, and we're just talking about turmeric. And so, Meg, what's another really good herb that people should be taking? Some of those mushrooms, Ooh. you think? or Oh, what? the red reishi. Red reishi is an adaptogen, of course, and there's only, out of 300 herbs, there's only really about a good dozen adaptogens. The adaptogens can be taken every day, whereas most good herbalists will tell you, don't take an herb every day. Take it when you need it. But adaptogens are different. They modulate the immune system and the neuroendocrine system, and they're cardioprotective and hepatoprotective. They help your liver. Red reishi is the king of all the adaptogens. It was highlighted, you know, almost 4,000 years ago by Shenong, the legendary yellow emperor, who said, this is the top. This is the top of the heap. This thing does more things in your body than you can imagine. All good, all benefit. So you can take one red reishi capsule every day as well. You know, is, uh, isn't it? I, I've heard that it's always good to take things not singly, but that you know it's better to take it sort of in a combination of with other mushrooms. Is that is that true? I, um, well, I still work one day a week as a, as a clinician. Um, behavioral health and doing guided imagery and wellness coaching for, for uh, patients and the, those who have a cancer diagnosis, who are vanquishing cancer, we definitely get them on multiple mushroom supplements because mushrooms, they're just the most amazing little plants. Mm-hmm. I mean, they live off decaying matter. They live off of death. And yet they go inside your body and they wake up your immune system to fight cancer and fight tumors. They're just incredible. So I've gotten such respect for my native healers. I talk about plants right now as if they have a diva, an intelligence. And as I take the red reishi, I say, thank you. Thank you for being so smart and waking up my sleepy immune system Mm. to detect and monitor cancer cells. How wonderful of you. So I say my little prayer. And that's because I've gone native. (laughs) <laughs> you've gotten you must be so healthy with all with all the stuff that you've been discovering um so what you're taking turmeric and red reishi and what what else what else are you taking? oh uh, what else mm-hmm. well it's not everything is an ingestible you know mm-hmm. for a medical anthropologist some some things are ritual and so i'd say it's my morning ritual that probably keeps me healthiest and that is um uh some mindfulness based meditation first thing in the morning and a really a quick little um, yoga Pilates right next to the bed. I don't even make it, you know, to change my clothes yet. I, I do this uh, series of uh, 12 to 20 stretches and, and strengthening moves because if you don't get to exercise the rest of the day, you've at least attended to every part of your body with that. So that's some of my old work in, good, good. in health and fitness. Yeah, yeah, that's really good advice. I, I've been meditating now twice a day, and it's been fantastic. Oh, I, I'm good, noticing to hear. Di- yeah, good to hear. Yeah, noticing a difference. Um, I had I had uh, Tom Knowles on the show a few weeks ago, and he's a Vedic um, meditation teacher, and um, mm-hmm. it's it's been great. So I'm so glad. Uh, yeah. So now, what is functional medicine? Oh, it's a new branch that tells doctors and practitioners dust off that biochemistry you learned when in med school or in college, because you're going to use it again. Because what's happened is. People enter the practice of medicine and they just follow protocols set by medical societies and medical executive committees, and and they forget that they can read research and they can make applications as well. For instance, the biggest number one research that I work with and as a clinician right now, and I teach also at CIIS and teach our integrative wellness coaches, is if you hear of anybody on a statin drug, and just about everybody gets put on one right now. Cholesterol is the least bit higher if they've had any heart disease or heart um, history of it. Then you be sure you take 400 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 mm-hmm. because statin drugs will wipe out the coenzyme Q10 that naturally occurs in every mitochondria in your body. And that mitochondria is the old powerhouse. Remember your Krebs cycle? Mm-hmm. It's where ATP is made. Moles of ATP, it's where you get your energy, and you have to have coenzyme Q10 in order to fire up that little factory. Well, what happens is people take statin drugs, and they walk around going, well, I wonder why my muscles ache so much, and I'm so tired. And the cardiologists don't even tell them, well, I've given you a drug that's basically wiping out a key essential natural substance compound in your body. So this is 
functional medicine is trying to restore some sanity to a pharmaceutically shaped medical system. Uh, so in other words, if, if you are on a pharmaceutical drug, then you should really take a look at adding supplements to support your body because of the side effects of the, that the drug is having on your body. Yes. Um, yes, that's a great I mean, you can reflect on the, the two news pieces that also just came out this morning, too. A generic drug that was given to somebody created a horrendous neurological disorder. The brand name was pulled by it, but the pharmaceutical companies are not forced to pull the generic counterpart oh. to it. Oh, interesting, yeah. It's horrible, horrible. That is horrible. So, yeah, so every time there's a court case, somehow right now we have such a pro-business attitude sometimes, in, in, within our, at least within our administration and courts, I mean, it's, this will be fought right up to the Supreme Court, but um, they've also protected the right for pharmaceutical companies to sell every bit of your personal private information when you have a prescription filled at any drugstore by your doctor. Oh, well, that's good to know. So where should people go? I mean, what kinds of, is a naturopathic doctor a good uh, a good idea, or what, what other, like an integrative doctor? Well, what, I, what I'm studying right now is actually healing circles, Beth. In which, oh yes, um, tell us about healing circles. Oh my gosh, they're so they're incredible. So I've been studying for seven years, and we'll have a naturopath, an Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, sometimes even a Native American shaman, a psychologist, maybe guided imagery, holistic practitioners, massage therapists, all sitting in circle, maybe seven or eight different disciplines with one patient with chronic ailment. And that patient gets to tell their story to everybody. And everybody weighs in with what they would do. And then as a medical anthropologist, I say, you know, based on what you heard, what did your gut tell you? What do you want to follow through with first? And sometimes they'll just go with the MD because they're comfortable with that. But they'll test some of the other waters as well. But what's happened in seven years of doing this with the same group, now the MD very often says, you know, I'm, I'm going to pass on this one because I think the naturopath with their investigative diet and elimination diet is much better suited to your problem. Mm-hmm. So Brilliant. a certain yeah. level of respect is kicking in. Yes. Now that's really, and it's so good for the patient because they're just not getting that one-sided point of view. Right. That's fantastic. And so where can people find Healing Circles happening? Right now we're still studying them here at CIIS. I'm going to do a demonstration of one on... Um, the last Monday in September, also, we have them at the Health Medicine Center in Walnut Creek, and we're developing a model that we can probably take out to the world. They would just write to me at mjordan at ciis.edu, and I can get them information on that. That's fantastic. Um, so now, you've done some research on healing modalities for chronic diseases, um, can you talk about that? Is this is this part of the healing circles, or is that something else? Yeah, it's it's an outgrowth of the healing circles. Sir, sir, um, I'd, I'd say the confusion about multiple choices right now is really plaguing folks. If you've got migraines, for instance, they say, I don't know what to do first. I read a study that chiropractic actually helps, but then I saw that some herbs help, or working with a nutritionist, an elimination diet. But then my MD said that there's a new drug out that's really good. Right. So confusing. That's the the quandary. (laughs) Right. That's the quandary we have right there. So out of seven years of hearing different ailments and different practitioners, I'm finally developing a kind of Rosetta Stone in which I'm saying, oh, my gosh, that's the one where Ayurveda really worked well, not the Chinese medicine so much. Or on this fibromyalgia case, we kept working with nutrition, 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 but then we found out... It was really the neurod alter, the altered neurotransmitters in fibromyalgia that was at the base of the problem, hmm. and that's why returning to the MD and getting that prescription for Lyrica was actually was the smartest way to get relief. Uh-huh. So sometimes we vindicate biomedicine. Sometimes we say, "Here's another path but that you know, works better." What I find that it's it's so. Um specific to, to different people, like someone with someone else with fibromyalgia, it might really be a connective tissue issue, yeah. and, they, and they find relief via um, massage therapy, skin rolling or something. So um, it's, you know, it's hard to, to know which direction, but, but not to give up. You know, that's, I guess, the thing. Not to give up, and you're right. The, the circle is all about deep listening to mm-hmm. the patient, too, so that you can not just fall for these catch-all 
titles of fibromyalgia, name and blaming. We, mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> Sydney Baker calls it the name and blame game. Instead, you get to listen to the patient's narrative, their story, and then tailor the response to that. It's fantastic. Like the, in the olden days when the, when the doctor got to spend time with you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, um, you, ha- you have deciphered a four-quadrant healing approach, you say, which is fixing energy, fixing matter, allowing energy, or allowing matter. So um, can mm-hmm. you explain that? Oh, this is kind of strange, but it's, a, it's kind of what I ran across as I traveled to the four quadrants of the world. I saw that when you have... Um, the high energy investigative energies of that came from the Middle Ages all the way through to modern era in Europe and North America. This is a very fixing matter kind of energy. You get in there and you it, it, it develop surgeries and um, you take out the offending party and you fix and rearrange things. Whereas in the South. Uh, in a more languishing kind of environment with more heat and more of a connection very often with nature, there's a more allowing energy to their healing systems. They sort of allow the body to heal once supported. Um, And then you go over to China, which is a northern hemisphere in the north, um, and yet there's the energy of the east, uh, you, you find something like a Qigong hospital, which is fixing with energy. Qigong is, is to work energy. And I've been to the Qigong hospitals in Beijing and in, or in um, Shanghai, rather, where you can actually watch a tumor start to shrink after a Qigong master passes his arms over it. Wow. So there's, you can either fix the matter or you can fix it with energy. Or you can allow the matter to be, which is more of an Ayurveda, southern, eastern quadrant in India. Well, um, this is so just, it's, 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 it's been, philosophy. It's been fascinating. And where are you off to next? Uh, let's see. I traveled to six countries in six months. I love staying home right now. Um, but I, I think next is um, probably back to Japan. Yeah. Well, Meg, we're out of time, but uh, I really thank you so much for being on the show. And if people want more information, where can they, where can, where can they find uh, it? I'm pretty good with email, and that uh, that would just be my website, megjordan.com, or or just um, my email, mail at megjordan.com. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Very good. Take care. And thank you so much for listening today. For podcasts and more information on my show, visit YourSupernaturalLife.com. You can download the show on iTunes. And you can find my book, Supernatural Home, on Amazon or on my website, SupernaturalMom.com. I'll see you here next week. Have a fabulous week and uh, have a supernatural life. I'm Beth Greer. (laughs) 